Now this video is a continuation of the previous one where we had found the zeros of the polynomials and verified the relationship between zeros and coefficients of a, b and c. So to watch the video on how I have solved the a, b and c part of this question, you can click on the link above. Now continuing with this, here again we have to find out the values of the zeros or roots or solutions of this polynomial which means we are going to equate this given equation equal to 0 and we are going to solve this or factorize this to get the values of u. So let us start by factorizing this and write it as 4u square could be written as 4 times u times u. So 4u square is split up this way and 8 could be split up as 2 times 4 times u this is equal to 0. Now let us circle out the common numbers or common terms from these two. That is we can see that 4 is a common number between these two terms and 1u is common between these two terms. So I am circling it out and the circled terms I am going to take it out as a common factor and in the bracket I am going to write the left out terms. That is from the first one u is left plus from the second one 2 is left. So this is equal to 0. Now we have two factors that is factor 1 that is 4u and factor 2 which is u plus 2. Now each factor I am going to equate it equal to 0. So it becomes 4u is equal to 0 my first factor and the second one is u plus 2 equal to 0. So here I am going to divide on both the sides by 4. So this is divided by 4, this is divided by 4. So 4 and 4 divides each other so you get u is equal to 0 divided by any number will be 0 itself. So we got the first value of root as 0. Now for the second one u is equal to. So plus 2 goes on the other side of the equal to sign and it becomes minus 2. So the second value of the root is negative 2. So let us consider alpha that is the first root as 0 and beta the second root as negative 2. So first part of the question is solved. We have got the zeros of the polynomial. Now let us verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients. Now. In the previous case we had already got the value of alpha the first root was 0 and the second root beta was negative 2. So let us substitute over here alpha is 0 finding the sum of the zeros so 0 plus negative 2 so we have 0 minus 2 which gives us negative 2 itself and let us find out the product of the zeros. So alpha is 0 times beta is negative 2. So 0 times any number is 0 itself. So we got the sum of the zeros and product of the zeros in terms of zeros. Now we have to find out the sum of zeros in terms of coefficients which is a, b and c. Now we have the standard form of writing the polynomials or quadratic polynomials as ax square plus bx plus c. This is the standard or general form of polynomials. Now we are going to compare the given polynomial and write it over here as 4u square plus 8u. So instead of x in this question they have given another letter as a u. So by comparison we can see that in place of a we have 4, in place of b we have 8 over here and we do not have any c in the given expression. So we take c as 0 since c is not given. So let us substitute the values of a, b, c for sum of zeros here. Sum of zeros in terms of coefficient is negative b over a. So we have b here as 8 so we get negative 8 over a is 4. So we have negative 8 over 4 as negative 2. So we can see that sum of zeros in terms of zeros and coefficients is same negative 2 negative 2 this is verified 
Now let us find out product of zeros in terms of coefficient. So c is 0 over here. So let us substitute c is 0 over 4. And we already know that 0 divided by any number is 0 itself. So again the product of zeros in terms of zeros and the product of zeros in terms of coefficient is 0. So both are same. This is also verified. Now let us move on to the next part of this question. So here again we need to find out the zeros of the given polynomial. The polynomial is t square minus 15. So to get the zeros we are going to equate this polynomial equal to 0. So we have t square is equal to negative 15 moves on the other side of equal to sign and becomes positive 15. And now moving the square on the other side of the equal to sign. Remember that when we are sending the square on the other side of the equal to sign we get it as square root of 15 and you always get it as plus and minus. Either it is plus 15 or it is minus 15. So I can split this up and write it as t is equal to either positive square root of 15 or we have t is equal to negative square root of 15. So we can consider the positive square root of 15 as your alpha value and negative root 15 as your beta value. So we have already got the values of the roots. Now comes the verification. So we had t square minus 15 whose roots we got it as alpha and beta square root of 15 and minus square root of 15. Let us find out the sum of these zeros. That is square root of 15 plus minus square root of 15. So we have square root of 15 and plus and minus we get it as minus square root of 15 which is nothing but equal to 0 because same numbers with opposite signs. And next let us find out the product of zeros that is square root of 15 times negative square root of 15. So positive square root of 15 and negative square root of 15 positive and negative we get it as negative and root 15 times root 15 so the root gets cancelled and we get 15 only by using the laws of thirds. Now let us find out the sum of zeros in terms of coefficients. Again we know that the standard form in which the quadratic polynomial is written is ax square plus bx plus c. So let us compare now so t square will come under the x square and minus 15 is a constant term so it should be written below c. There is no t term or x term here so there is no b. Now let us compare the value of a. Here if there is no value given to the t square we take it as default 1. So in place of a we have 1 and we saw that there is no t term in the given expression so the b is 0 and the c the constant is given and it should be taken as negative 15. Let us substitute the values here now of a b c. So negative b over a b is 0 so negative 0 over a is 1 we get it as 0 itself. So the zeros and the coefficients are verified they both are same. Similarly for product of zeros. Here we have c as negative 15 and a as 1. So negative 15 over 1 gives us negative 15 itself. So again we can verify that the zeros, the product of the zeros and the coefficients are same. So this is also verified. Now let us solve the last part of this question. 3x square minus x minus 4. Now this is of the form ax square plus bx plus c that is the standard form of the quadratic polynomial. Now for this one we have to multiply the 3 with negative 4. So let us multiply over here 3 times negative 4 that gives us negative 12. Now let us start finding out the factors of negative 12. So we have already got one factor that is 3 times negative 4 that gives us negative 12 or we have negative 3 
times 4 this also gives us negative 12 then we have 2 times negative 6 which gives us negative 12 or we have negative 2 times 6 which gives us negative 12 and there is one more that is 12 times negative 1 gives you negative 12 and negative 12 times 1 which gives you negative 12. Now these are all the ones which gives us a product of negative 12. But we should also get a sum of in this case we have the middle term as negative x. So we need to take only the coefficient so we have negative 1. Now the product of the factors which give us negative 12 should give us negative 1 when we add or subtract them. Let us start with the first one that is let us consider the factors 3 and negative 4. So if we have 3 and when we add it with negative 4 let us check if we get negative 1. So 3 plus or minus gives us minus 4 itself. So it becomes 3 minus negative 4 is negative 1. So this satisfies the product as well as the sum. So rest all we can just discard them. So if you are good at finding the factors quick enough you can skip this all steps of finding all the factors. Now once we have got this let us split the given expression. So we write it as 3x square and the negative x will be split up as 3 that is plus 3x and minus 4x minus 4 and this should be equated equal to 0 since we are finding out the roots or the zeros. Now here let us group them as first two terms and last two terms and we have to find out what is a common term between these two. So here we have 3 as a common number and as well as x as a common term. In the bracket what remains is 1x remains from the first term plus since 3x is completely taken out only 1 stays so we take it as plus 1 so x plus 1 is for the first term now from the second one we have negative 4 and negative 4 common so I'm going to take negative 4 common out and in the bracket we should get x plus 1 you can verify this by again multiplying back the brackets and checking them that is minus 4 times x gives us minus 4 x and minus 4 times plus 1 gives you minus 4 so this is right and the second verification is whatever you get in the first bracket should be equal to the second bracket that means your factorization is going in the right direction now this should be equated equal to 0 now again from these two terms we have x plus 1 common so we are going to take x plus 1 common out and from the first term 3x stays and from the second term we have negative 4 which stays so we take it as another factor and this will be equal to 0 next we are going to equate each factor equal to 0 that is x plus 1 equal to 0 and 3x minus 4 is equal to 0 so here we take positive 1 on the other side of the equal to sign so we get the first 0 as negative 1 and here we have 3x is equal to 4 and x will be equal to 4 over 3 that is by taking 3 on the other side so we have got the two zeros now one is alpha which we can take it as negative 1 and another one is beta which we can take it as 4 over 3 now the last step is verifying the zeros and the coefficients or finding out the relationship between those two let us look into it so here we had alpha equal to negative 1 and beta as 4 over 3. Let us find out the sum of zeros here. So we have negative 1 plus 4 over 3. So taking the LCMs here we have over 1 times 3 times 3. So we get it as negative 3 over 3 plus 4 over 3 which is nothing but 1 over 3 and let us find out the product of zeros so here we have alpha which is negative 1 
times beta 4 over 3 which ends up as negative 4 over 3. So we have 1 over 3 as sum of zeros and negative 4 over 3 as product of zeros. Now let us start finding the coefficients. Now again comparing the given expression to the general format of quadratic polynomial that is ax square plus bx plus c. So let us write over here 3x square minus x minus 4. Now by comparison we get in place of a we have 3 and in place of b since there is no number we can default take it as 1. So here in this case it is negative 1 take the signs as well when you are considering the coefficients and in place of c we have negative 4. Let us substitute over here. So in place of sum of zeros negative b we have negative a part of the formula and b we have negative 1 over a is 3. So negative of negative is positive so we get 1 over positive 1 over 3. Here we can verify that the sum of zeros and sum of zeros in terms of coefficient is same 1 over 3 1 over 3 now in case of products c we have negative 4 and a we have got it as 3 so product of zeros is also verified so in terms of zeros is negative 4 over 3 in terms of coefficient it is negative 4 over 3 this is also verified so this is the way we solve the given examples I hope you have understood all the steps and liked the video. So if you are liking my videos, like, share and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.